A picture was worth a thousand words. And this one said it all. Mark looked down at his camera, admiring the picture of the surrounding mountains that he'd just taken. Their peaks stretched up like fingers, raised to brush against the pale blue sky. Photography was his one true passion, and the backwoods behind his house were perfect for taking stunning shots of nature's beauty. In fact, it had been the reason he'd bought the house in the first place. After all, the woods were empty of people, and, as far as he could tell, most animals. He'd seen signs of them, such as tracks of deer, birds' nests, and so on, but he'd yet to see one, aside from the occasional squirrel high up in the trees, or hawks circling high above the forest, searching for prey. Sometimes he would roam the forest for hours at a time, waiting for something to catch his eye. He'd often said that people never really looked at photos closely enough for all the details, or thought about how it had been taken. As a kid, Mark had never really thought about photography much, beyond it being a good hobby. But once he took a job taking pictures for calendars, postcards, magazines and the like, he was hooked. He remembered thinking to himself that while others had to take jobs that, while they might pay good enough money, they would never really look forward to doing them. But he would be able to do what he loved, and get paid for it. The pay wasn't phenomenal, of course, but it was enough to pay the bills, with a little extra besides. And after all, it was a small price to pay to be able to continue his passion. Mark was always looking for the perfect shot. It had to be just the right angle, just the right distance, and though that might take quite some time, it was always worth it when he settled into a comfy chair back at his cabin and went through the day's pictures on his camera. Every now and then, this would result in it being dark already when he got home, but he didn't mind. He'd started bringing a flashlight, just in case, and he wasn't worried about getting lost. After so much time spent in these woods, he knew them like the back of his hand. Sometime later, as the sun started to sink below the horizon and the light of day began to fade, Mark decided to call it a day. He turned, still gripping his camera, and started trudging back towards his house. As he started flipping through the pictures on his way, he smiled, thinking about how they really did show nature's beauty. He stopped at the shot of the mountains and marveled at how well placed the picture was. You could see the mountains rising up in the distance, the valley below, and at the very bottom of the picture, the sloping hills that were dotted with trees at the bottom. Just as he was about to get to the next picture, he spotted something else. At the bottom of the hill, there was a white blur in a clump of trees. It was thin and tall, and if he'd had to guess, probably a foot or so taller than him in height. Mystified as to what it might be, he stopped walking and, squinting at the camera in the fading light of day, zoomed in for a closer look. What he saw made his blood run cold. There, standing among the trees, was a pale humanoid figure that was tall and impossibly thin. Its incredibly long, slender fingers ended in razor-sharp claws, and its eyes were completely black. But the worst part was that it seemed to be looking directly into the lens of the camera, at him his heart pounding. He looked up and noticed something that he should have noticed earlier. The forest around him was completely silent. No sounds of birds chirping, or any animals whatsoever. Just the wind whistling through the trees. Suddenly, he heard the shifting of branches. He whirled around, but saw nothing except for the empty forest surrounding him, and the branches shifting in the wind. He turned around, ready to head home as fast as possible, and then screamed. There, not more than ten yards away, was the thing from the photo. Now that it was closer, he could see its coal-black eyes perched high upon its weirdly elongated face, 
It had no nose and a mouth that was full of jagged, pointed black teeth. It looked thin to the point of seeming emaciated, and Mark could see the outlines of bones wrapped in pale, smooth skin. Its hands hung at its sides, tipped with long, curved talons that looked like they could easily slice through his jacket and the flesh underneath. Mark backed up a few steps, then turned and sprinted back the way he came, his mind racing. What was that thing? Where had it come from? How was this even possible? His thoughts were interrupted by sounds of the thing crashing through the trees as it chased after him. He ran even harder, wondering how he was going to be able to get back home. Could he go in a circle and head back to the house before the thing caught up to him? He turned to see how close the thing was, and he really wished he hadn't. It ran on all fours, impossibly fast, and made no sound as it followed him through the woods. His heart in his throat, he turned too late to avoid the rock sticking out of the ground. He tripped, and his camera went flying. As he got up, he began to scan the ground, desperately searching for the camera, but it was nowhere to be seen. He was about to give up and keep running when he heard a twig snap behind him. He froze, turning and backing away slowly as he once again came face to face with the thing. This time it was much closer, and it walked towards him in an odd, erratic fashion, keeping its black eyes fixed on him, its long arms half-stretched towards him. Mark turned to run, but he tripped again and hit his head on a rock. Dazed, he rolled over to see the thing standing over him. Too late, he realized why he'd never seen much wildlife in these woods. He screamed one last time, and then all was silent. Mark's neighbors reported him missing a week later. When he was not found at his home, a massive search effort went underway. Helicopters and search and rescue teams combed the forest for any sign of Mark. The only thing they ever found was his camera, still intact and half buried under a pile of leaves. The man who found it, one of Mark's neighbors, took a cursory inspection of the pictures on it for any clues as to the nature of his disappearance but found nothing. The last photo that had been taken on the camera showed a picture of the mountains, with a view of the forest below. He was impressed with the stunning view that had been captured, except for a small blemish at the lower right corner. After finding nothing else of interest on it, he moved on, searching the rest of the area. The picture was interesting, but it didn't do anything to help them in their search. Eventually, the search for Mark was called off, and the pictures were filed away as evidence, all except for the last one. A copy was made and placed in the town hall in his memory, but it was soon forgotten about, except by those who occasionally passed by and admired it for its wonderful view of the mountains and forest. Well, except, of course, for the strange discoloration at the bottom near the trees. Yes, a picture that said a thousand words, and this one said it all. Hey there. Thank you so much for taking the time to drop by and listen to this story today. It really means a lot to me. I put a lot of time and effort into making these videos, so it's nice to know that there's someone out there listening. Do me a little favor, would you? Click that like button, leave a comment, and if you really feel like it, why not subscribe too? Okay, happy tales everyone. See you soon.